poetry promoter for about 15 years uh, altogether and then over the last five or six years uh, I've started putting together um, touring live literature poetry shows uh, where I get a group of poets together and we choose the poems that we want to work with maybe thematically or, or some other arrangement and then I work with a director and a designer to make those readings into something that works in a, a theatrical space and then we get in the van and off we go. I started the, the company, I'd, I'd been doing some freelance work um, organising sort of straight author tours for organisations like the um, British Council um, and uh, there was um, a couple of really proactive people at the Arts Council at that time who identified about half a dozen uh, people doing similar sorts of work to me saying there's this new art form that we think is just about to break, it's called live literature, we think that you might be able to create a piece of live literature do you want to go away have a think about it and see what you come up with um, and so I did and that was my first show um, Tilting the Mirror. I like to find an audience that is a bit nervous of poetry and might not be a, a practiced poetry reading goer uh, and might not know very much about what's happening in contemporary poetry and just say this is what it is here, here it is pr presented to you in a way that is uh, you know, very thoughtfully designed to appeal to you as an audience member. And then with the poets, I just want to work with poets who want to find different ways of getting their work out there, so not just a standard reading behind a mic. What I wanted to do with this particular show is to work with poets who are closer to the start of their careers. I gaze from my kitchen like an astronaut. That line comes from one of John McCulloch's poems. Um, it was a show specifically designed that it could be performed in lots and lots of different spaces. So there are 10 poets, each of whom have an individual um, show, which is 20 minutes long, but it can be broken down to shorter versions. Uh, and then it can fit anywhere. So we have been to a theatre bar, we've been to a museum, we're going to a castle, uh, we're going to a hotel with it. Uh, I think we've got one standard theatre gig, uh, but everywhere else is some interesting space that we're looking to animate with, with these little poetry shows. So I trained in sort of theatre and acting and directing, that sort of thing. Normally I like to give it a sort of um, a visual element. I think that's probably where I, I start first of all, so give it sort of, I think about a little set or something like that that they might sort of work within or, or some props or, um, you know, lighting, that sort of thing. Each poet brings something different to the rehearsal, so I can never go with a, um, a particular, I, you know, I have a little plan, but it normally changes in, in rehearsal because they all come, come with their own unique sort of set of skills and, and, and ways of reading the poems. What she's done is sort of seen what we brought in terms of our own ability to perform and our own relationship with our poems. And, and I think that's, they've worked with that and from there. So I don't feel like anybody's come to me and my poems with some set idea about you know, what I'm trying to get across and, and what my poetry is about. It's really been taken from the poetry, which is wonderful. I'm used to making devised theatre, which kind of there's big participatory elements, so obviously that, that really helps because it's, it's the poet's work that you're using to create these little shows, so they're a massive part of kind of creating that and of creating the direction you're going to go in with it. I think the poetry audience that, there, that is there already um, is kind of really responsive to the work and it, it's nice because it's something a bit different, but I think coming from a theatre background I can see it kind of it connecting with a the theatre audience as well because of those those elements that link in with the kind of 
theatrey things. Um, so I can see definitely the way that Jaybird works kind of does link into a, a wider audience of perhaps non-poetry goers. I'm not a natural actor. I found it quite difficult to walk across a stage naturally. You know, I forgot how to walk. But I think that what's happened with this is read it, other readings that I've done, the way that I deliver those poems has changed and for the better through working with Jaybird. Um, I'm representative of the kind of um, page poets who would normally just very much read out of their book. So um, they've been encouraging us to kind of play more with our voice and use gesture and have these little settings that, that set the atmosphere for our poems. So that they read through a, a sheaf of our work and, and kind of tried to work out what visual um, equivalents they could use for things within the poems. So like, for example, my show, I have a lot of colour in my poems um, they spotted, which is not something I was really aware of, but they decided to pick up on that and have um, vases of flowers strewn over a table so that um, whilst I was kind of naming these colours into the air, the audience could see um, a visual splash of colour. If you have the right amount of movement and it adds something to the performance without taking away from what you're saying. Because, I mean, I'm not an actor, so I'm not acting my own poetry. It's about the poetry, but it still has to make the performance interesting. So it was nice to, for them to help me find that, just that place in between. It's really nice to have a reading that's been thought through so carefully beforehand. It's a very uh, layered and textured performance, and um, I think a really intensive experience. October evenings, see this avenue climb to space. Lit rooms hover in the icy dark. I gaze from my kitchen like an astronaut at street lamp stars. The buckthorn stretching to the light of Venus. No two planets, you said, come closer than Earth and her. The smaller world swinging towards us as she spins wrongly, remembering an ancient impact, proposing union, then veering out of range. I stroke the edge of my laptop. Consider your email's transatlantic journey. A blackbird skitters among maple canary yellow shirts, their summer hordes of sugars transmuted to carotene 